Tristan Thompson's played almost a decade in the NBA. An NBA champ made four straight finals with the Cavs and LeBron James. He is now joining us via the Coward Global Satellite Network. So let's start with this, Tristan. Um, your reaction to the players electing to go back and resume play. Do you think it's the right decision? Yeah, I think it's the right decision to, to go back and play because, Colin, this is the thing. Uh, the NBA and then the players are so powerful and have such a big say in our community that this platform that we're given right now just in sports is uh, something that we should take full advantage of. And, and the last thing we want to do is have those that aren't standing up or, or, or speaking about what's really going on in, in America, sp- talking about other junk that has nothing to do and not going to help our country. So I think it's, it's, a, it's great for what the players are doing. And I stand by my brothers that, that want to go back out there and play, but also use this platform, whether it's doing media circuits or whatever it is, whenever they have a microphone in front of them, to talk about we need to be better as a country and what's going on right now isn't right. You know, it's interesting. You talk to players currently in the bubble, and LeBron James himself changed his mind three times yesterday. He said, I'm done. He said, let me think about it. And then he said, I want to play. And I I think part of that is it's an incredibly emotional situation, especially for veteran players. They're away from their kids. They're away from their families. They're like in LeBron's case, he's 3,000 miles from home. You talk to these players, the, the, the emotions beyond Black Lives Matter, just the emotions of dealing with the bubble. Has it been difficult for players? Yeah, it's, it's definitely been tough just because, like you said, guys have been away from their families and especially what's going on right now. It's first of all, players are in a bubble. So they're away from their family, their loved ones for an extended period of time, which they're not ever used to or ever, ever plan on doing ever in their career. And then second, what's going on uh, in Wisconsin and, and just going on in, in general in our country, uh, guys, are, guys are furious and upset because uh, myself and other you know, African-American uh, players in the NBA, we, we understand because it, it, it hits close to home. We have family members that have dealt with situations very similar just because of the color of their skin. So it, it, it's a lot of emotions and, I, and I'm glad that you know, the NBA has been in full support of, of the players and letting the players have a voice. And I think, uh, you know, it, it, it's great for the guys to come together and, and, and share their stories and, and get back to, you know, playing on the court. And, and I feel like basketball is another form of motivation and giving hope to the younger youth that, you know, during tough times, you band together with your brothers and together we're going to make change and we're going to just keep motivating the youth and, and the younger generation. It's interesting. What if the players now have the billionaires, the owner's ears? They've, they're, they're listening now. What should they do? What should they ask for? What matters to you as a player? What matters to me as a player right now is, uh, first of all, I think our owners in the NBA are, are, are the best owners in professional sports, and they've done a great job supporting us. And, uh, you know, right now we just want them to continue to be on the front line with us. You know, almost like we all bend together, lock arms, because at the end of the day, in all reality, minus, you know, Michael Jordan, you know, the, the, the guys that are, you know, that are oppressing us and, and they are, you know, Caucasian white males that are that's going on. So they look very similar to our owners. So with our owners stepping up to the forefront with us and being by our side to say, hey, listen, this is not right. And we support these men because we don't think that's right. And, and I think the owners are doing a great job with that. And, and I think LeBron and the rest of the players are no, I wouldn't say challenging owners, just saying, hey, come with us. And I think our owners are doing a great job doing that and continue to do that because that's how, that's how it starts. You know, uh, it's, it's one step at a time, but, it, you know, we take care of our part. Others see and they follow. You know, it's funny. You were drafted. You were a top five pick out of uh, Texas, and that was 2011. So nine years ago. Yes, sir. So when you mm-hmm. joined LeBron James for the first time, you became teammates. Um, is he more political now, or did you see very early that social stuff mattered to this new friendship, LeBron James? Did, did you know immediately he's going to be more than just a basketball guy? 1,000%. You know, I actually known LeBron since I've been 17, so uh, since the first day of meeting him, um, we all know how great of a player he is, 
and, 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 and with the numbers show it and all that. But I think for him, what's more important is what's going on off the court and what's going on in society because, you know, LeBron and like myself and a lot of other uh, players in our league is from the inner city that have, have dealt with this, you know, have got pulled over, have, have, have got, you know, not have a resume looked at. I mean, me personally speaking, um, my father, uh, who, who's Jamaican, my family's Jamaican, uh, has dreadlocks, and in Toronto, uh, he, people wouldn't even look at his resume because of, the, because of the hair that he had, because he had dreadlocks. And I remember him coming home one day, you know, frustrated, angry, and my mom's like, what's wrong? He's like, they're not even giving me a chance just because I have dreadlocks. Like, it, it, it's, it's unfair, and, and, and it forced him to cut his dreadlocks because in order, you know, he had to put food on the table. So all that stuff hits close to home, and it definitely hits for LeBron. So I know for him, it's like, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to, you know, break the wheel, and we're trying to change the, change the narrative because it's, it's not right. So last night, did you think the season would be canceled? Was there a point that you did think, Tristan, when you were talking to everybody, that it would be canceled? I think emotions were high, so I definitely think initial reaction for some players was, you know, this this is ridiculous. You know, we're in the bubble, we can't see our family. Uh, how like it's just it's just so much emotions weighing on them, especially when you start thinking about your childhood. It brings it all back to that. Sure. But I think once guys sat down and and, and talked and went back and forth, is that listen, guys, we have this platform that that is unmatched right now. I mean, Colin, if you remember. When, when, the, when COVID hit and the NBA shut down, everything else shut down in the world. Yeah. Everything shut down. So, like, that just shows you how strong we as players are and just the business of basketball is to, to, to a country but, and to the world. So, for us having this stage, we need to continue to be out there, continue to voice, voice our feelings, our frustration, and keep challenging the rest of America to say, you know, let's be better. Let's, let's move forward and let, let's, let's, let's end all this this. this oppression and it's just not right it's just like you know it makes it it, it makes me emotional too because i just remember like being a kid and just and going through it personally it's it's uh it's tough yeah did your parents talk about it a lot with you yeah my mom used to always talk about it. she said you know son um you could be the nicest person but you always got to do more if you think if you think is a, a b is great you got to get an a you got to always never just just be average because at the end of the day uh, unfortunately, in this world, you know, the color of your skin, it, it, it's, you know, sometimes people don't want to give you the same opportunity. So you just got to be 10 times better than the standard. So where they cannot deny you, you know, and wherever you go, always say please and thank you. Let, never let someone say, oh, that kid right there, that Tristan Thompson kid, he has no manners. He, it's regardless of who it is, whether anyone I meet walking down the street, I say good morning, say hi. I might not even know them, but I never want someone to be like, oh, because he is who he is. Never prejudge me. That's one thing my mom always told me growing up as a kid. It's great having you on the team, buddy. I love having you on the team. Thanks, man. No, thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Tristan Thompson, nine years in the NBA. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.